So uh, after the splashdown and uh, coming back into the boat in your capsule, what was the first uh, experience when they opened the door? Uh, I think you're trying, to, you're trying to be stable, not move your head too much. You're trying not to get sick because it's a little bit provocative coming, coming back and the re-entry and the whole experience, uh, all the, the Gs, um, all the G-forces that you experience on your body after being weightless for so long. Um, and then the splashdown itself, bobbing, you know, in the waves. Um, so you're trying to stay still, to be stable. And then those guys come in, they're very, very professional, very meticulous, very methodical. Um, they come in, they extract us um, one by one. Um, what, what actually struck me first, so you see faces, first of all, new faces. You haven't seen, you know, you've seen the same five or six faces for, or a little bit more for six months. And then suddenly you have new people, new people, new voices. It's a little bit overwhelming. Um, and then I, I, I think it's also the smell, like just the smell of soap, uh, the smell of shampoo or detergent um, was, was kind of surprising to me because in a confined environment of the space station, you, you lose a sense of smell. The smell is always the same. Uh, so those are the two first thing. And then the fresh air when you get out of the capsule. Uh, and then it all goes really, really fast until uh, I got here. Okay, you've now the, traveled to space uh, in a Soyuz and in a Crew Dragon. Uh, how is it different to land in the steppes of Kazakhstan or in the water uh, off the coast of Florida? Mm. Um, I think general principle is the same, right? It's you have to brake, you use your main engine to brake, um, and then you, you're uh, braking by the friction in the upper layers of the atmosphere, uh, which makes your capsule heat up, and that's why you have the um, heat shield. Um, so same kind of experience initially, a braking burn a little bit longer, 16 minutes. Um, of your thrusters firing to, to dip your, your trajectory into the, the upper atmosphere. And then the, the braking gets more intense as you go and the Gs, the G forces build up. Uh, so we went all the way up to 454, I think, Gs for a, over a period of seven, eight minutes. Um, not sustained 454, but kind of in, a, in, that, in that area, uh, which is provocative when you've been, you haven't experienced the weight of anything on your body and suddenly you're squashed in your, in your seat, you have a hard time breathing, lifting your chest. Um, and then uh, when the parachutes open, um, it's also kind of a big jolt on the capsule and the capsule is swung around quite a lot. Uh, first, the drogue, uh, the risers, the drogue shoots that slow you down to 50-ish meters per second. Um, and then the main shoots to eight meters per second. You, you kind of still swing a little bit. Um, the water landing itself is, is smooth, much smoother than what I remember from Kazakhstan because on the ground, so use as retro rockets at the last minute, but very often you kind of bounce. And if you have any side velocity because of the wind pushing the parachute, very often you tumble. Um, so you bounce, you tumble, it's like a car crash. Um, and here on the sea, there was no waves, completely flat sea. So we just softly um, ditched and then we were bobbing nicely in the sea. So it was actually very smooth. Uh, I enjoyed the experience very much. Excellent. When you were um, from space, you posted a lot of pictures uh, from our planet Earth and highlighted uh, in, your, in your own way the, the climate change. Um, is there anything you would like to say about that? I think it's, um, it's, uh, so it's a different experience. The, the first time you look at the beauty of the Earth, and then you start looking at more of the fragility and more of the negative effects of the human presence. But the second time, you kind of know what to expect and know what to look at. Um, I think the biggest difference this time, you still see uh, the pollution in some areas, you know, air pollution, uh, sea pollution, things like that, or water pollution, things like that. Um, but what we really did see much more this time is the, the, the extreme weather events, uh, tropical storms, you know, lining up in the Southern Ocean as one was making landfall, the other one was already forming in the, in the Atlantic Ocean, which is kind of a scary thought, a scary sight. Um, wildfires over the course of the entire summers, uh, entire regions were covered in, uh, in smoke and ashes, which was very, very impressive to see from the space station. So those events we know are linked to climate change, um, and we witnessed a lot more. Uh, it was in summer this time, winter last time, but still, we witnessed a lot more of those events this time. Uh, and I think the frequency and the amplitude is increasing, so that's definitely worrying, and uh, hopefully we can do something against it in the near future, rather sooner than later. <laughs>